Hey, you guys, just wanted to get on here and talk about our next gas law. Um, it is called Gay-Lussac's law, or is your textbook referred to, refers to it Edmonton's law. Um, so there's, for some reason, there's two different names for the same gas law. I'm going to look into this because maybe there's a little bit of scandal or something about why there's two different names for this, um, for this gas law. Uh, so I'm going to look into that for you uh, at a later time. But the relationship between pressure and temperature is what we're looking at. So our, the question that we're answering today is, if temperature increases and volume stays constant, what happens to pressure? And it's really easy. What happens to pressure is that it increases. Okay, so I want you to go back to think about the first video lecture that we did. And we talked about kinetic energy and temperature. So um, kinetic energy is this, the energy of motion, right? How fast are those particles moving? That's what kinetic energy is about. So temperature is a measurement of the average kinetic energy of a sample. Okay, how much are the particles moving? Temperature gives us a good idea about that. So if we look at our first sample, 300 Kelvin, which is just about room temperature, maybe a little under room temperature, really. I know 300 sounds like a lot, but um, room temperature Celsius is about... Um, 25, 22 degrees Celsius. So add 273 to that and you have about, about 300. So uh, about room temperature, um, those particles are hitting the sides of the container and exerting 100 kPa of pressure there, okay? You double that temperature. So think about double room temperature, which would be quite warm, right? Um, you double that um, and you would get 200 kPa. So you can see it's a direct relationship. And why is that? Well, these particles are moving, you can think of them as twice as fast, okay? And if they're moving twice as fast, they're exerting so much more force on their container, which is what pressure is. It's how much force is exerted per square inch or per unit of, of area, okay? So the faster those particles are going, which is increase in temperature, the more pressure is exerted on the container. So it's a direct relationship. And that can be stated this way, um, which in, in yellow, that formula, I prefer the formula below it because I just don't like to have to mess with um, getting rid of a fraction. I prefer the version that's already um, not in fraction form, just like in Charles Law, I did the same thing. Um, so I would definitely jot down that formula. That's the one that you're gonna be using for this week's work. And let's go ahead and look at an example. Oh, yeah, a pressure cooker um, demonstrates Gay-Lussac's Law, but well, oh, and instant pots are big thing right now, you know. So let's look at this, um, look at this example problem. Aerosol cans carry warnings on their labels that say not to incinerate, uh, burn them, or store cans above a certain temperature. This, uh, this problem will show you why it's dangerous to dispose of aerosol cans in a fire. Yeah, definitely don't do that, you guys. Mm -mm. I know some of y'all have free time on your hands. Don't be doing that. Um, the gas in a used aerosol can is at a pressure of 103 kPa at 25 degrees Celsius. If the can is thrown into a fire, what will the pressure be when the temperature reaches 986 degrees Celsius? So the very first thing you need to do with all gas law problems is identify your variables, right? So your initial pressure, 103 kPa, which is just a, a teensy bit over atmospheric pressure. You know atmospheric or standard pressure is 101.3. Uh, temperature one is 25 degrees Celsius. Temperature two is 928 degrees Celsius. And they wanna know what your final pressure is. First of all, those temperatures have to be converted to Kelvin. That's your first step. You know, all gas laws have to be executed in Kelvin because Kelvin doesn't go negative and Celsius does. These relationships are built on those positive relationships, right? Um, and even if it asks for it in Celsius, you know, something like that, you still got to convert to Kelvin. The relationship is built on Kelvin. Um, okay, so in order to get P2, we, and if you go back to our formula here, if you're looking for P2, you're gonna do P1, T2, divided by T1, right? So P1, T2, divided by T1, which would be 101, uh, 103 kPa times 1201 Kelvin. Where do we get that? Up here when we convert into Kelvin, right? Um, and then 298 Kelvin on bottom, you do that math, um, and then you get 415 kPa. Now that's, that right there is good for sig figs, 415 kPa. You could put it in scientific notation um, like they did here, but it's absolutely not necessary. You could leave it in standard notation. Um, so there's an example of Gay-Lussac's law or Edmonton's law, depending on apparently um, 
who's referencing. So we're, like I said, maybe this week's Friday fact could be um, about, about the reason why there's two different names for the same gas law. Um, I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope this kicks you off on the right foot. Get those five problems um, done, turn them in, just like what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks. Have a great day.